Signing Trey Jemison might seem like a small move for the New Orleans Pelicans, but I'll tell you why it can actually be very impactful this season. It's a Tuesday episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. Here with y'all on this Tuesday, we are dropping the show now that we're in the deep off season, just to three days a week. We're going to do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week. It'll probably just be Monday, Wednesday, Friday to kind of keep it a little bit easier and over the course of the week. This week, just a lot going on right now. So three days a week till about mid-September. Then we're going to ramp it back up to five days a week. Get you set for training camp preseason and the start of the new Pelicans season. So of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. So please subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Join over 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube as well. And we're going to talk about the newest Pelican signing Trey Jemison on a two-way deal. I like this, actually. This is a move I like a lot, and I think this is the guy that could be potentially starting on opening night. I'll tell you what he brings to this team. We've got Olympic updates from Jose Alvarado and Daniel Tice, as well as looking then at the minutes for Carlo Matkovich and Eve Misi. So let's get into it in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans, brought to you, by the way, by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for $20 off your first purchase terms apply. So Michael Scotto of Hoops Hype broke the news uh, late last week that the Pelicans are signing Trey Jemison on their final two-way deal. You might remember this name. He was with the Pelicans in training camp and in preseason last year before going to play for the Birmingham squadron. Then he signed a a 10-day contract with the Washington Wizards where he played two games. And then after that, the Memphis Grizzlies signed him to a uh, 10-day contract before signing him to a two-way contract where he played... I don't want to say like significant, significant minutes for him, but he played 23 games for Memphis last season, starting 14 of them and playing almost 25 minutes per game. This wasn't just like a throwaway player or anything like that. They waived him and now he just signed here in New Orleans on a two-way deal. And I really like this move. I was fairly impressed with Jemison in preseason, you know, a year ago for New Orleans, playing four games for him during that preseason time. It wasn't anything that like, Totally, totally stood out. But you see a guy that looks like an NBA player to me is really what I see. Like, I do think he belongs in the league. And that's one of the reasons why I like this move so much for New Orleans. You know, the numbers and the stats with Memphis are really what's going to be most telling here. Because that's where he played against actual NBA players. And it's tough to read into preseason numbers. And we'll compare those to the numbers that he put up with the Memphis Grizzlies. And while with Memphis, it's, it, it doesn't stand out a ton, right? 7.4 points per game, 5.8 rebounds per. He shot 55% from the field on almost six attempts per game. So about making three and a half of them. They're not bad numbers. Per 36 minutes, you know, it's 11 points per game. rebounds, about two blocks, but the block numbers don't really tell the whole story. And it's not bad, you know, for a team that maybe needs some more depth at the big man spot, the center spot, getting a guy who has some starting experience, because when you look at this team right now, the guys who have like NBA experience and starting experience, it's Daniel Tice. We'll get into him in the next segment. You have Jeremiah Robinson Earl and... Now you have Trey Jemison, Eve Misi, Carlo don't have that NBA experience yet. And so to get a guy on a two-way deal that has started games in the past, you could do a whole lot worse. Like this is a no-brainer decision. And if you like what Jemison gives you, if you want a bigger body, he's six foot 10, he's built, he is strong, taller than Daniel Tice, then I think you can start him potentially, you know? And I think that is going to be one of the more important things here for New Orleans is just finding that. We'll get into other teams that have had kind of like lackluster centers in the past and how New Orleans compares to them, but getting just a little bit more depth, you can get away with a guy who's just good enough 
And that seems to be what you've got in Trey Jemison here. You know, his numbers with the Pelicans in preseason, uh, you know, last year, where the numbers just go, weren't like anything amazing. But then you look at some of the rebounding numbers, and that was good. So let's look at his numbers, you know, with the Pelicans in preseason, with the Memphis Grizzlies too. You know, in preseason for New Orleans, the scoring wasn't there. You don't really need that, but the rebounding was really good. He was out there on the court, like gobbling up rebounds. In just over 15 minutes, he was getting about seven rebounds per game and about a block per. Those are pretty encouraging numbers, in my opinion, from what you saw from him. In, it's preseason, keep that in mind. But his defensive rebounding rate was near 30%. That's a pretty high number in something that you want to see from it from him and what they're going to need. You know, during the regular season with the Memphis Grizzlies, it wasn't quite that. It was, you know, much lower, to be perfectly honest with y'all. So I don't know exactly how good of a rebounder he's going to be. You know, in those starts, in those minutes, he played almost 600 minutes. He had a uh, defensive rebounding percentage of 13.7. That is shockingly low. He is very good on the offensive glass and can be a threat there. And you would imagine most of his scoring when he's playing for New Orleans, if he's playing for New Orleans, is going to be on putbacks, which I'm fine with. You know, he turns the ball over a little too much too. That was a problem in preseason and for the Memphis Grizzlies this past year. But if he can kind of find some sort of happy medium on the rebounding, if he can be a solid enough defensive rebounder, this is someone that I think gives you good size to hang with some of those bigger centers if you just want someone with NBA experience doing all of that, which Eve Misi and Carlo aren't there yet when it comes to that sort of thing. In terms of blocks, you know, I think some of the numbers look good, but he's not really a rim protector. It was a 4.6% block rate you know, for the Memphis Grizzlies, which is better than anyone really on the team right now, at least in the NBA, but also not like an elite, like strong rim protector number. There are highlights of him swatting some shots and you definitely see him kind of moving well out there. So remains to be seen. I think for a guy who's just 24 with some upside, in my opinion, an NBA experience to get him on a two-way deal that you could convert to being, you know, a standard NBA contract should you need to, they could wave Matt Ryan and make room for a guy like, Trey Jemison, I like it. I like that a lot. And I think this is a guy that could be a starter and maybe just really gives New Orleans like some better depth at that position that they didn't have before this signing. So overall, I'm feeling pretty good about the Trey Jemison move. Let me know what you think in the comments down below on YouTube. You a fan of it? You not? Do you think he should be starting? Or is it that someone like Daniel Tice is impressing you with his play in the Olympics right now? Let's get updates from Jose Alvarado and Daniel Tyson, how they've done, because by the way, they've both done pretty well. Let's break it all down. Coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by Game Time. This is my go-to ticketing app, and there's so many different reasons for it, but with a new one right now, if you're a baseball fan, Major League Baseball in full swing, even while other sports aren't, you want to go to a game, you've got game time as an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. And the wonderful thing on the game time app is prices actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. But if you want to buy your tickets sooner, you can do that too, because with the game time guarantee, they're going to credit you 110% of the difference if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. So now... Or later is always a good time to buy with the Game Time app. And if you're going to a place you haven't been before, you get the panoramic view from your seat so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. And it's not just for sporting events. You can do it for comedy, theater, concerts, and so much more. And that's why Game Time is my go-to ticketing app. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. Become an everydayer. That means you listen Monday through Friday to Locked On Pelicans. Let me know what you think about Trey Jemison. 
Is he a starter, backup, not anyone who's going to play? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And now for your second listen, Locked On Saints training camp going full bore there with the New Orleans Saints. Ross Jackson, host of Locked On Saints, is there in Irvine covering it on a daily basis. Subscribe to the Locked On Saints podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make them your second listen today. So let's talk some Olympics. You know, I'm watching Team USA. I'm watching some of these other games too, but maybe you are, but there's two Pelicans players out there right now that are having an impact in a positive way on their teams. One's 0-1, one is 1-0 right now. But let's start with Jose Alvarado. In the loss to South Sudan, 90-79, to it was close until a big run by South Sudan at the end of the game. Jose Alvarado played really, really well. 26 points in the loss going 9 of 16 from the field, 3 of 8 from deep, and 5 assists as well. The scary thing came that he rolled his ankle. This guy just perpetually lives with ankle injuries, it really feels like, or lower leg injuries here. But he returned to the game and still kind of led them in scoring. He's actually the third leading scorer in the Olympics right now with that 26-point game. He's going to be important for New Orleans. You don't want to see him get banged up or have a significant injury. He tends to do a very good job of staying out there and playing through pain, maybe to the point of making his injuries last a little bit longer, but you like that like grit, that hustle from him. You know, he played really well. I like the fact that he was getting to the line, attacking the basket. The three-point shooting is obviously going to be important. Three for eight is a great number, and I'm very happy with that type of performance from him, along with the assist in running that offense because... Look, that's the role he's going to play here in New Orleans next season. I put out the call for questions on Twitter, as I do pretty much every day, for what you want to hear about on Locked On Pelicans right now. And one of the things was, wait, where's the energy going to come from by losing Najee Marshall and Larry Nance Jr.? They just brought energy to the team. The guy that I also thought was one of the biggest spark plugs for him is Jose Alvarado, and he is here and he is playing well. And I've said repeatedly that Olympic form, FIBA form, that off-season national team you know, run that you get can be really beneficial. There, there's no replacement for actually just playing competitive basketball games. Yes, your off-season is longer. You're going to be maybe a little bit more tired. But this is the way that you stay sharp and that you really can come into next season with a big jump on the competition. Look at how Anthony Edwards with FIBA and Team USA used that form to propel him and the Timberwolves to an incredible season this past year. Jose Alvarado is in line for a significant role off the bench with New Orleans. Now, it could be behind CJ McCollum off the bench. It could be with CJ McCollum starting. We don't, we don't know some of that just yet. But Jose is going to play a big role as the defense and energy guy. I did a show last week for the everydayers, or for the people who aren't everydayers, I should say, looking at how, and we'll, we'll look more at this, that you know the second unit is going to have like a very different look. It's going to be much more offensively focused. So you need a little bit of defense in there. You lost that with Najee Marshall, with Dyson Daniels. Jose is still kind of the defensive guy, but you want to see the scoring too. We've needed an increase in scoring punch from this team. Him playing really well with Puerto Rico and running their offense, scoring the way that he does and kind of being the guy. If he can carry some of that form over, and I think he will, I'm very excited about what he'll be able to bring to this team next season because certainly he is going to be one of the like main guys off the bench right now, or at least kind of the backup point guard, right? You know, backup point guard is a bit of a relative term on this roster here, but overall, he's going to have a significant role and he did well. I just don't want to see a significant injury remains to be seen. If this one is, they talked about how he was in pain and playing through it. So hopefully it's not going to be too big. It sounds like he's going to be playing more going on. They play in their next game on Wednesday against Serbia. They're in a tough group with Team USA as well in there. So we'll see how they end up doing. But overall, like they've played not great outside of Jose Alvarado kind of leading the team. The Pelicans also have another player in the Olympics right now, and that's Daniel Tice, potentially the starting center for New Orleans. He started for Germany in their 97-77 win over Japan. They actually played today for their second game. And Daniel Tice was perfect. Seven for seven from the field, 18 points, including going two of two from deep. You know, 
he's slightly undersized at six foot eight, but he brings a type of physicality that I don't think is on this roster right now. Like my, my prediction, early prediction, it's, this is in pencil, is that he is the opening night starter for the New Orleans Pelicans. That he is going to be the guy that plays, you know, the majority of minutes at center outside of maybe like Zion or others if you want to go with a small ball lineup. But when you look at kind of the group that they have, Daniel Tice is probably the starter. Trey Jemison maybe is going to be the backup. Then maybe it's Carlo. Then maybe it's Misi. And we'll get into both those guys a little bit later in the show here. But him going 7 for 7, 18 points against some top competition, you know, is, is pretty good. This is a guy that has done it repeatedly for Germany, that is very consistent for Germany. And with that team having some talent, winning the FIBA World Cup a year ago, you know, he's out there starting for him still. Like there's there's some talent on that team and he repeatedly is in the mix. You know, to get him on a veteran minimum deal, to have him be a starter, even if he's a little bit undersized, but give you some toughness at that center position. The shooting is good to see. The scoring is nice, but you just want this guy to set screens, rebound, and like do his job well. I think he can do that for this team. You know, I don't think you need the center position to be a significant role for New Orleans. I've been saying this for about a year now that I think you can do it pretty cheaply, and I don't hate that New Orleans is... I don't want to say going center by committee because I don't really think it's that. I think you're going to have like your starter and then you're going to have the backup there. And then you'll see Zion at the five in small ball lineups and things like that. So I, I don't find it to be center by committee, but I think you have like guys that are like a couple of flyers, right? Trey Jemison is a bit of a flyer with high upside. Daniel Tice is a bit of a flyer, but, you know, probably safe and a solid as you could get given the market. You know, you have some upside picks in Eve Misi and Carlo. Those are all good things to have on the team, even if they're not all going to play right away. I don't think you're going to be playing like each of them five minutes. And I don't think they have like various, you know, like completely different skill sets that it's like, well, today we're going to start this guy. Next game, we'll start this guy against this other team. I think they're going to kind of stick with, uh, you know, a small group that they have there. I don't know why my screen just did that. And that works for me for right now with everything. So hopefully we end up seeing one of these guys like kind of really take the reins, whether it's Daniel Tice, whether it is Trey Jemison, but that remains to be seen. But I think given the performance from Tice here with the Olympics, knowing that he's kind of the known quantity and that Trey Jemison has that NBA starting experience. And you can see that this team, that this franchise is valuing like experience with some of these guys, right? That's, I think, a reason to think that those two guys are going to get minutes. So what does that mean for Carla? What does that mean for Eve Misi? Let's look at that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. So please subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Join over 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube as well. And for your second listen, enjoy the Locked On NBA podcast. There is no offseason in the NBA and Locked On NBA provides daily basketball analysis from national and local experts in 30 minutes or less. I'm also on there every single Wednesday hosting Locked On NBA. No one keeps you as informed and entertained as Locked On NBA, available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's fun doing the national show, talking like overall things about the league. You know, last week here on Locked On Pelicans, we looked at the over-under set by FanDuel. We turned that into a whole show on Locked On NBA, looking at some of the more interesting ones too. It was really great. If you just want more just catch-up news in under 30 minutes per day, go to the Locked On NBA podcast. I'll talk a ton of overall NBA here because you care about the Pelicans, but if you want to know more, go check out the Locked On NBA podcast. It's really great. So, Let's keep kind of talking about the center position because it's one of the big question marks for New Orleans going into this offseason, right? And going into this next coming season. There's a number of big men on the roster. There's now Trey Jemison, Daniel Tice, Carlo Makovic, and Eve Misi. And you also have Jeremiah Robinson Earl who has played center for New Orleans too. So that's, you know, I think an option to kind of not do center by committee, but to fill out the pecking order. And the way I look at it right now, as I just said in the last segment, Daniel Tice, probably Trey Jemison next, 
And then I think you don't, you don't really need like a third or fourth, right? Because you're going to look at what the Pelicans did last year. It was Jonas Valanciunas and then Larry Nance Jr. is the small ball five and then Zion Williamson. And you rarely saw anybody else. You know, Cody Zeller got in there if there was foul trouble or an injury or, you know, a blowout either way. So we don't need to kind of factor in those like fringe scenarios when it's not like meaningful basketball minutes being played. You know, after that, I think it's probably going to be Carlo as like the third center. I think he was looked good enough in summer league, has played with Birmingham in the past, has that international experience too. And I think they're going to really bring Eve Misi along slowly. I would not be shocked to see Misi down with the Birmingham squadron a lot this coming season, you know, unless things in the center play for New Orleans is really bad. And then it's like, you know what? It's break glass in case of emergency. Let's play him. But I, I don't necessarily anticipate that being the case. You know, this was a question and I, I kind of said it earlier in the show that someone asked like, you know, are there teams that are constructed similar to the Pelicans currently that have like had success making the NBA finals? And I think like there kind of are, right? You can look at even the Dallas Mavericks who found something with Derek Lively the second to like give them just solid center minutes, you know, going forward. But it wasn't like he was scoring like 30 points per game, right? He was just kind of like a lob threat, a vertical spacer, a pick and roll guy. And that was really it. Like he filled a very simple role for that team. You know, Daniel Gafford was good at the end of the regular season, didn't really work in the playoffs. So you wonder like how high level of a player is he at this point? He can elevate you and give you what you need, certainly, but it's not like he's like a top end starter. Can one of these guys on this team just fill that role of like, do the little things that we need done well, and it'll be fine, right? Again, those centers for the Mavs weren't playing like heavy, heavy you know, minutes where they were like the most impactful player on the court. It was Luca. It was Kyrie. That was who was going to carry that team. You look at some of the other teams, right? Look at teams like the Golden State Warriors. And this isn't the best example necessarily, but you have them not really having like a center. It's been Kevon Looney for forever. And then Draymond Green at the five with that switchability, unlocking small ball lineups that carried them to those sorts of titles. You look at the Cleveland Cavaliers teams, though, that LeBron James was on that went against them in those, what, four straight years or whatever it was. They didn't really have like a high end starting center either. Kevin Love was playing power forward for them for the majority of his minutes. They had other guys playing center. There wasn't like an elite starting center with that group you know you can look at the Toronto Raptors and they had an aging Mark Gasol kind of doing it but he was he was probably of all the guys we mentioned like the best player the best one in terms of like raw talent and even playing at the highest level there too so you know it's not like you need elite elite talent here you know a rim protector would be nice but this defense has been good without that so can you get away with Trey Jemison who's not an elite rim protector or Daniel Tice who's not an elite rim protector playing center minutes for you. And I, and I think you can, as long as they can kind of compete defensively and then get up and throw some things down or shoot the three, it, they're going to be fine. You know, one of the things when looking at for kind of comps with this roster is, you know, it, it's tough right now in the kind of the modern NBA, right. To find a team that has two non shooters in the starting lineup, Zion's a non shooter and your center's a non shooter. You can make BI a shooter if he plays that way. CJ is a shooter. We can call, um, DeJounte Murray a shooter. You could call Herb Jones a shooter. You could call Trey a shooter. But having two non-shooters is tough. It's why it's hard to build around, you know, a team around Zion and Ingram if they're not going to shoot threes. And again, Ingram can shoot threes. Zion really can't. So it needs to be on Ingram to kind of be the one that changes there. We've seen him do that. He's been good. Turning Zion into a shooter really like would try and one, well, it wouldn't work well and it would negate what makes him great. But yeah, I can kind of add that into his repertoire here. So it's tough to find like actual comps, but you can find teams that don't have like a high level center play. I think this all was good, but it was Kawhi Leonard doing a lot of that. Siakam was playing, you know, that kind of role at times for them too. So there, that's why when I look at this roster and I'm not completely freaking out that the center position hasn't been like fully addressed or fixed. Again, I don't think they're going to go center by committee. But can you get away with Trey Jemison being the fifth starter on your team? Daniel Tice being the fifth starter on your team? Even Carlo. I, like, I do think the answer to that can be yes when you have the talent level that you do here. And look, it looks like Ingram isn't going to be traded or moved right now. 
And so you're factoring him in. If he grows and adjusts, and I think he's going to do that this season, I truly do, I think you can be in a really good position to still go out and win games even if the center position is a bit of a like hole for you, in a sense. There's so much other talent here that if you can find the right combinations, the right rotations, and we'll look at that this offseason because I'm starting to kind of piece together maybe what Willie Green will do, that I think is going to lead to a lot of success. And the two big needs were point guard and center, and they kind of address that, you know, at least address the point guard position with DeJounte Murray. So having that group out here with Ingram playing hopefully the best version of ball for himself, I'm okay if, you know, their first round draft pick and Eve Misi is a project and going to be spending time in Birmingham. I'm going to be okay if Carlo doesn't like look like a high end starter because I'm not anticipating that he will. Just Fill the role that you need to fill pretty well, and I'm going to be happy with that, and I think that's how this team will be okay. And there's upside, there's chances for these guys to really work out at the center spot. You know, you haven't been always able to say that when it comes to, you know, some of the talent on this team. So I at least like that there's some potential and upside with this group of guys also. So we'll see what ends up happening with the center position. If they try and make another move to address it or if they stick with it as is. Do you think a trade's coming? Do you want them just to stick with this group? Do you want to maybe see it like fail beforehand? Let me know what you think in the comments down below on YouTube. So that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Pelicans. We'll be back tomorrow and Thursday, three days a week. Let me just kind of regroup, refresh a little bit. I need a bit of an offseason as well. But I appreciate y'all sticking with me. We'll do a live show soon too to just kind of interact, answer your questions. Should be a lot of fun. So please subscribe to the Locked On Pelicans podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Join over 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube as well. And as always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. This is the Locked On Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'll see y'all next time.